Investment advisory services offered through Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Alpha Star Capital Management, LLC, and Swan Capital are independent entities. What your money would say. Andrew is Mayor. Money Talks. Money Talks. Are you listening? Money Talks. Are you listening? What your money would say with Andrew McNair. We're live here on What Your Money Would Say. I'm your host, Andrew McNair. And for the next 30 minutes, every Saturday from 1230 to 1 o'clock, we'll be taking financial chickens and making them financial swans. But what does it mean to be a financial swan? It means to sleep well at night. And I believe as a retiree, you've worked your entire life to get to this point. You've probably found a way to put three kids through college. You saved money in your 401k plan. And you were even able to tithe and give to your local church and your charity. But it's time that you sleep well at night. And as I talk with my wealth management clients, I tell them, I say, your job is to enjoy the pleasures of retirement and let me in talk about the responsibilities and deal with those while you enjoy yourself. And if that's you out there and you're worried um, about putting those three kids through college, or you're worried about having an elder parent come back and live with you, or you're placing your elder parent in assisted living and you don't know where to go for expert advice, well, you've found the right place. On What Your Money Would Say, we're going to talk about how to help your elder parent sell their home. And that's such a big emotional um, step. And when someone loses that independency of you know leaving their home, you need someone to help guide you and navigate you through this process. Um, because again, it's emotional and it's a big financial decision. So I'm looking forward to bringing on Anne from Main Street Properties. She's a senior real estate specialist, and I'm going to bring her on in just a few minutes. But I did want to share with you a few upcoming events. Um, and you can check out our web- website at swan-capital. That's swan-capital.com. And check out more information on these events. But we have a veteran aid in attendance workshop coming up in April where we're going to share with families how to receive up to $2,085 a month tax-free if they serve during a wartime period and they're over the age of 65 and they live in assisted living, skilled nursing, or they're receiving home health care services or sitters at their own home. So if you want to find out more information about that benefit, I encourage you to call our office and RSVP for our next event. And you can call our office at 850-380-9558. That's 850-380-9558. Um, while you're on swan-capital.com, I encourage you to sign up for our weekly market update so you can find out more information about the market and stay up to date. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. So let's talk about today's topic. Helping an elder parent sell their home. Well, I want to introduce you to Ann, who's a senior real estate specialist over at Main Street Properties. Ann, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Ann, one of the things that I deal with constantly with families is trying to afford either assisted living or the downsizing to a smaller home, or if they're moving in with a child, when they're selling that home, they're worried about getting the right price. Is it? a good market to sell a home these days? Yes. Um, And we've heard for years about how bad the real estate market was. And yes, it was bad for a while. For a while, we couldn't even find the bottom. But now things have turned around, and it is, I think, an excellent time to sell. Um, We're seeing prices stabilized. Uh, We're seeing uh, a shortage, actually, in this area. Really? Inventory Mm -hmm. shrinking? Inventory is shrinking, which, of course gives you a more stable market and it also changes it for a while we went through what's commonly called a seller's market where sellers were grateful to see any kind of offer at all come in right um that was before we as we say bottomed out because at that time prices were still falling like a rock but they did finally hit the bottom and they bottomed out and then they slowly started back up and i think people probably wised up and started to buy while they had the opportunity and now it's leveled out into much saner market. Now, talking about the Pensacola market, is that what we're seeing nationally as well? 
or is it just local? Yes. Now, of course, you always will have differences according to the regions of the U.S., Uh, just like you've got huge differences in prices of homes here in Pensacola and in other parts of the country. But, of course, what we're interested in locally is our local market. Sure. And it has stabilized to a great extent, and we're all much happier about it. Which is great news because I deal with, unfortunately, a lot of families that think that the, we're not at the bottom, but we're well past the bottom, and we are increasing in property values. Oh, yes, yes. We are, we're seeing things. Well, it always goes back to supply and demand, and as our supply has shrunk, then you still have demand, and that always drives prices up. Now, thankfully, we're not seeing the tremendous unrealistic rise that we saw in 05 and 06. We're seeing a saner increase. It, it just wasn't sustainable. You know, when I brought on Chris Jones, the tax appraiser, you know, he said, you know, when we had that drop, you know, in 08, really that when we came back to the mean where we are now, we're actually where we should be. And mm-hmm. what was really exciting to hear from him because he was on the show a couple of months back is he's expecting six to eight percent growth over the next few years, which is phenomenal compared to the national average, which is around four percent typically. Yeah, that sounds like um, pretty good numbers to me, and he generally knows what he's talking about. He's a very sharp guy. Yeah, he's the man in the know when it comes to property pra- uh, property prices. Well, and also there's um, there are other people in this area that also track trends and statistics, and they're telling us the same thing. Which is great news, and you're you're seeing that on a hand you know hands and feet level. You're seeing that um, now. I'd like to talk about. Being a senior real estate specialist, what does that certification allow you to do to identify the needs in the situation that maybe someone that has an elder parent and wanting to sell their home, how does that certification help? Well, in order to get the certification in the first place, I had to have a certain amount of experience and a certain number of transactions already completed that involved senior citizens, uh, which, of course, I did. and I've had the uh, certification for several years now. But the thing that I find interesting and challenging is that seniors can't be pigeonholed. Everybody's got their own set of circumstances and their own particular needs, and those have to be addressed. There are certain things that are a common thread, so to speak. Uh, For instance, if a senior citizen is downsizing, whether they're downsizing from the larger home they needed when they were raising their family to a smaller home that they find much more comfortable, or whether they're going to an assisted living facility. you still got to deal with, what do we do with the house? Sure. And there's a lot of ways to approach it. There's a lot of things I think are sometimes overlooked. Uh, does it need updating? If it needs updating, how and where to spend the dollars on doing updating? Uh, which things are going to add value and which things are going to only add appeal? And there's a difference, and an appraiser will be glad to explain those to you. Uh, then there's the issue of, once you get it on the market, uh, what do you do about the insurance? A lot of people overlook that issue because if the house is now vacant, that could definitely affect the insurance coverage on the house. And a wow. lot of people never give that any thought. Sure. So one thing they should definitely do is always check with their insurance agent. And we're going to talk about that in detail, but I want to highlight the things that she's bringing up is things that she deals with on a day-to-day basis. As a senior real estate specialist, she's running into these issues that what I tell people is you do this once in a lifetime, you know, growing old, looking to, you know, moving with your, your children, looking to move into assisted living, but we do it every day. Yes. So dealing with a specialist is very important. You know, I try to give the analogy of a heart surgeon versus a general practitioner. You know, if you have some really tough, you know, heart issues and you say, well, I really have some pain, you know, a doctor will send you to a heart surgeon. And if the heart surgeon says you need heart surgery and you identify that you need a specialist, it would be crazy to go back to the general practitioner for heart surgery, right? Right. And the same thing is with financially and real estate, that you have to deal with specialists that know your situation in and out and have dealt with families in similar situations. You know, what I tell my clients is what got you here won't necessarily get you there. You know, your financial advisor of Maybelline has, you know, grown your portfolio and has been focused on accumulation. But when you're paying three to $4,000 for an assisted living, it's a different ball game. Because if the market does a correction like we had in 2008, you could be taking out those funds at a higher level than you ever have in your life. So that's why it's important to work with a specialist. 
So if you're just tuning in to What Your Money Would Say, I'm your host, Sandra McNair. And today we're talking about helping your elder parents sell their home. And I brought on Ann, who's a specialist in this area. She's a senior real estate specialist, and she's going to share with us how to approach you know, the process of talking with your parent about when it's a good time to finally sell the home. How do you approach that discussion? Because again, you know, we're talking about the greatest generation and they're very independent. Well, again, you have to look at the individual situation. That particular generation frequently is a very independent minded group. Um, I know my mother falls in that generation, so I deal with it constantly. (laughs) (laughs) And sometimes uh, they may feel that they don't need the large house anymore, but they still want to have their independence. And in a case like that, perhaps selling the larger house and buying a smaller house makes more sense. Now, of course, in a situation like that is frequently where you could come in because if they sell the house and buy the smaller house, still have funds left over, they're going to need somebody like you to Who knows how to invest them. in conservatively. Right. So what they need to do is, is basically keep a team approach, so to speak, and being able to work with a realtor who understands their needs, but don't be afraid to talk to someone like you who also is going to understand their needs at a different level. Sure. Now, when it comes to those expenses of an assisted living, a skilled nursing, or just having home health care, if they move in with a child and they need home health care because – If you're trying to take care of your your parent alone, if you're out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The caregiver can sometimes go first. So you're you're spending a lot of money on caregivers so that you can just take a break from dealing with an elder, from taking care of an elder parent. So this is where it comes in with dealing with a financial advisor. You want to, you know, call Swan Capital for a free long term care um, assessment to make sure that you're prepared. You know, what we do is we sit down with you and we look at your long term care insurance coverage to see if it will uh, pay for the home health care, to see if it will pay for the assisted living. We also look at VA benefits. If you're a wartime veteran out there and you, you could be potentially eligible for up to $2,000 a month tax free to help offset some of these long term care expenses. Also, if you meet with Ann, she can share with you how to get the most out of your home when you're trying to sell it. And you brought up something about value versus appeal. Can you explain that? Well, a lot of us um, of all ages, we get comfortable in our home, and um, we like it just the way it is. We don't really get that excited about making changes. But when it's time to put the house on the market, you want the greatest amount of appeal to those potential buyers. And if the house was built in the 70s, for instance, and maybe still has avocado green um, (laughs) bathtub, or things like that, it definitely needs to have some updating. But before jumping in and doing updating, get some information, talk to an experienced real estate agent and or an appraiser, because there are certain things that you can do to a home that add a great deal of appeal, but they will not necessarily add dollars to the appraisal. And you also need to keep in mind that the national statistics show that at best, You only get back 80% of what you spend on improvements and updates. Your greatest return on your dollar is always in paint, of course. That's the easiest one to do. But right behind that is upgrades made to kitchens and bathrooms. But again, when you're talking about a kitchen update, that's very important. But again, you don't want to go overboard and do really high-end stuff that's not going to add that much on the appraisal. So get information before you dive in. In such a good point, because if you're taking a house that's, you know, a time warp from the 70s (laughs) and trying to bring it up to date, the problem is, is if you do too much updating, you might update it to a point where someone doesn't even like that kind of update. And so you put all this money into something that they're going to have to come back and redo anyway. Yes, I have a prime example of that. This happened several years ago. Um, I had a house that I was listing for someone. It was exactly the situation you're talking about. The elderly parent was going into assisted living, and I was dealing with the grown son in handling the transaction. Well, the house had been originally built in the 60s and had parquet flooring, which a lot of people don't know what parquet is. It's actually (laughs) a wood flooring of type. And um, he was going to put carpet in there. And the trend had started but wasn't as strong then as it is now away from carpet. And I told him, I said, please don't spend that money on carpet because the buyer might not want carpet. So instead what he did is he got the quote for carpet. And he said, okay, 
we will do a flooring allowance. This is what I encouraged him to do because with the flooring allowance, then that new owner can spend it any way they want to. Exactly. As it turned out, the young man that brought the offer to buy the house happened to have grown up in a house that had parquet flooring, and he absolutely loved parquet. So he asked that the flooring allowance be spent to refinish and repair the existing parquet flooring. When they were done, it was beautiful, stunning. And he bought the house, moved in, is very happy with it. Wow. And, and that's a perfect example why you should, you know, call in and deal with a senior real estate specialist because that's a prime example. How much of a lose-lose would that been? You know, the, the buyer wanted the parquet floors, but the seller thought that they were going to replace it, and that would have been a shame. You ruined the floors and you replaced them with something they didn't want. Yep. And that's why you have to deal with specialists. You know, at, on What Your Money Would Say in Swan Capital, we deal with families in the same shoes you are, dealing with an elder, um, elder parent. And also having kids in college or potentially still living at home. You know, that's the sandwich generation that we're finding that's very abundant in today's culture. We have kids that are still living at home. We have elder parents that are moving in. But how do you navigate those waters? Well, if you call Swan Capital, we have a long-term care consultation where we look at the long-term care benefits that your elder parent has. We look at potential home sale proceeds that we can go to use for long-term care. And then we also specialize on helping you be, become eligible for VA benefits to help put maybe 1000 to $2,000 to help offset the expenses of a home health care, assisted living, or skilled nursing. And you can call our office at 380-9558. That's 380-9558 to find out more information. We'll be right back. Today's financial landscape can be rough. One of the most important aspects of planning is choosing the right guide to help you navigate the road to retirement. Andrew McNair and the team at Swan Capital is dedicated to providing the very best service in the retirement planning industry today. Swan Capital is a full-service independent wealth management firm dedicated to providing guaranteed custom income plans that you cannot outlive. Contact Andrew McNair at Swan Capital, 850-380-9558. That's 850-380-9558. The difference between Swan Capital and you? You retire once. We help people retire every day. You should be enjoying your retirement years, not letting worry keep you up at night. Swan Capital. Sleep well at night. Contact Andrew McNair at Swan Capital, 850-380-9558. That's 850-380-9558. Again, that's 850-380-9558. The Veteran Benefit Project founded... The Veteran Benefit Project, founded by Andrew McNair, president of Swan Capital, is a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping veterans and widows of veterans with long-term care expenses by qualifying for the VA's aid and attendance benefit. Learn how to receive over $24,000 per year from the VA towards long-term health care. There is absolutely no fee associated with our assistance to the veteran, the widow of a veteran, their families, or any retirement community. Our goal is to preserve the dignity of the veteran and to... Re We're live here on What Your Money Would Say. I'm your host, Andrew McNair, and today we're talking about helping an elder parent sell their home. And I have the pleasure of bringing on Ann, who's a senior real estate specialist at Main Street Properties. And we're going to be talking about the ways how you approach that um, discussion with your elder parent. We're also going to talk about some of the nuances that keeping a home while living in um, with your son or daughter or living in assisted living could be a real big mistake. And we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. But if you're uh, tuning in, you have some questions for Ann about the real estate market. This is a live show. So you can call our show at uh, 850-476-3116. That's 476-3116. And also, I want to extend an opportunity if you say, well, you know what, I want to find out you know, if I can get the most out of my home. I want to find out if those long-term care insurance benefits are going to pay for my mom's care, but I can't read financial Greek. I can't read the policy she has, and I want some help with that. Well, at Swan Capital, we offer a long-term care insurance assessment where we sit down with a family, and we look at their long-term care insurance needs. Uh, we look at what's available, the resources like long-term care insurance, VA benefits, and home proceeds to help pay for those expenses. And that's a free consultation that we do. And you can call our office at 380-9558. 
That's 380-9558. So, and let's talk about some of those nuances that families don't think about when they, you know, sell everything with their, their parents' belongings and they move them to their home or they move them to assisted living. What about insurance? Well, of course, uh, insurance on the house is one of the biggest things that I frequently think gets overlooked um, because the home of that elderly parent has been their home for years, and it was insured on that basis with the insurance company as their home. And once they move out and the house is now vacant, that could put an entirely different slant on whether or not that house would be covered Wow! in case of a loss because uh, basically insurance companies hate vacant houses. And in most cases... And it pose a bigger risk. Yes, they pose a bigger risk. Well, if a pipe should freeze and burst, there's nobody there to know it. You're going to flood the neighborhood before they find if, out. If, if something minor should start what would have been a small little fire, nobody's there until the house is fully involved and the fire department's called and it could be a total loss. Sure. So before moving out and leaving a house vacant uh, and just forgetting about it and putting it on the back burner, it would pay to talk to your insurance agent and find out exactly what kind of coverage the house has and under what conditions. I know one lady that um, I listed a house for several years ago, her insurance jumped Fourteen hundred dollars. Wow! When when her insurance agent got her change of address and they had a conversation and he found that she had moved out of the house to a retirement facility, it was a fourteen hundred dollar j- jump in her premium. So of course that is on top of the cost of the property taxes, which don't stop. The uh, utilities, which must remain on, especially if the house is on the market, you cannot really effectively look at a house without being able to turn on the lights. And it's Florida. And it, the weather, I mean, it will just take its toll on a home that oh, just yes. lays vacant. Yes. If a house is shut up vacant without the air being circulating by the AC system, you can get all kinds of problems that you don't even want to think about. So you've got taxes, insurance, maintenance. You, somebody's got to keep the yard cut. Yeah. Exactly. So when you start adding up all of this, you're paying for uh, practically. It's almost like you're paying for someone to live there, but the, no one's living there. Right. And then again, when you have the insurance premium jump, which frequently happens, uh, it, it makes um, more sense to, if you're going to do it, put the house on the market with a good, experienced real estate agent, get it priced right, and move it because those expenses will, in the long run, eat you for lunch. And and what a time that you don't need any extra expenses. When you move into assisted living, you're paying for home health care or you're paying for skilled nursing that can be upwards of $6,900 a month. You throw on home insurance taxes, all those expenses, you're going to eat through your savings so quickly. And if you're saying, Andrew, there's no hope, well, there is because there's specialists that, like us, that deal with these issues every day. Again, you do this once in a lifetime. We do this every day. So Anne can help you with how to sell the home and how to get the most bang for your buck versus you know value versus appeal, what additions, what updating do you need to do? And then I can help you on the financial front of how do you pay for this system living? How do you pay for that care? And what do you do with the home proceeds? Because you need to leverage everything you can when you're, you're paying four to $6,000 a month. You need to leverage the long-term care benefits you paid for. You need to leverage, if you're a veteran, you could be eligible for VA benefits to help pay for it. And you need to leverage your home proceeds to make sure that those funds last you a lifetime in that community. Absolutely. Now, dealing with the discussion, the discussion of selling your parents' home, there's a lot that goes into it. Tell me a little bit about how the process of approaching it, what needs to be done that families may have not thought about. Like, you know, take us from the estate planning sell and all the way through. Well, of course, uh, it's a difficult decision uh, any time that a senior person has to make the decision to leave the home they've been in for a number of years. It's a tough one. It is a tough one. Uh, Frequently, a good chat with the family doctor is a good approach because the doctor is in a position to know best the health situation of the person and could probably give some very, very sound advice there. 
Sure, my grandfather's generation looks to those individuals from authority because they've worked so long in school to become an expert. So if a doctor says, you know, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Patient, you know, you need assisted living. You need home health care. It's not safe anymore to live alone. You, you know, you did catch the house almost on fire that one time. You know, it comes from a different opinion. And again, we'd be happy to have that conversation, you know, because when you as the child talk to your parent about this, you're still the kid. This is true. And you don't want to put that chat off too long because it can be dangerous. I know um, one person that um, I sold a home for um, was living independently and they thought they were fine. But I understand that in addition to almost catching the house on fire one day, she actually drove the wrong way down one of the busiest streets mm. in town thinking it was a one-way street. And at that point, the decision had to be made. So that could have been catastrophic sure. uh, on both occasions. So the, the chat needs to happen before it reaches that stage. And we talked about it earlier in the show, but, you know, you might think, say, well, Andrew, I'm not ready to give that house away. You know, that's a family heirloom, and we want to get the most bang for our buck. But isn't the real estate market still bad? No. And could you talk about that? Oh, it's much improved. We are all delighted. Um, it, it started hitting the skids in 2008, as most people probably remember. And, of course, this is 2014, so that's six years that we have had to watch it fall so precipitously. We wondered if it was ever going to hit the bottom, which it finally did and leveled out. And now we're seeing a sane rather than an insane slow, steady increase in prices supply and demand have leveled out and um, right now I think is a good time to sell provided you're ready to get the house ready for the market and I let's talk about getting it ready for the market what is I'm what's glad that on tell you asked that I am <laughs> so glad you asked that I I like to compare it to and you ask any woman and she'll tell you that she's not going to a party unless she looks her very best sure okay now what party could be more important for a house than going on the market. Mm -hmm. So you never, ever want to put a house on the market until it's ready to show. When you feel that it is ready to throw the doors open and say, come in and look how gorgeous this place is, <laughs> that's when it needs to go on the market and not before. I learned that lesson years ago the hard way. Now, some say, well, you know, I'll put that off. There's so much 30, 40 years of stuff in that house. How am I ever going to get it out? I still work. What's one solution for that? What would oh, you there's a number of solutions, um, and actually that's one place that I can help in addition to it. I know that's not real estate, but there are options that people don't think about. Of course, you can always have the typical garage sale. That's one, but that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, different individuals around town that do what we call estate sales. I, I thought would. you had to be dead for an estate no, sale. No, no. <laughs> they, they still call them estate sales, but they're very, very frequently done when a person is downsizing either from the larger house to an assisted living facility, a retirement facility, or even just down to a smaller home. The decisions have to be made of which items they can sensibly take with them and which ones have to go. And then again, if you don't want to go the estate sale route and you don't want to go the garage sale route, there's always donating. You can donate. Uh, there are a number of charities in the area. Um, we'll be happy to take your stuff. They would be delighted to have it, and it, in many cases, serves a very good purpose. Yeah, I mean, that's great that you have these 30, you know, 40 years of stuff that you, you know, you're very close to. I understand that. But wouldn't it be great if that ended up in another family's house that they could really, truly enjoy? Absolutely. And it goes to charity. What a great. I mean, there, it's hard to beat that. Um, so if you're just tuning in to What Your Money Would Say, I'm your host, Andrew McNair. And on today's show, we talked about... How, helping a family, um, you know, member who could be an elder parent, an elder uncle or aunt, deal with selling their home and how you navigate that conversation. Um, I want to, you know, just thank Ann for coming on the show. And how can they get a hold of you, Ann? Well, my name is Ann Tidmore. That's T I D M O R E. And my cell phone is actually the best way to reach me. That's 850 572 7458. 
Well, thanks again, Ann, for coming on the show and on What Your Money Would Say. But if you're out there and you're saying, well, Andrew, not only do we want to sell the home, we want to find out how we can afford assisted living and skilled nursing for my elder parent, call our office at Swan Capital. We specialize in helping families transfer in that process. And we can share with you how to navigate long-term care insurance, VA benefits. Um, We can also point you in the direction of Medicaid benefits. And if you call our office at 380-9558, 380-9558. We'll be happy to help with you. Thank you for tuning in to What Your Money Would Say. 